Thank you, Lord. So um, um, can we just stand right now, everyone? And I just want to honor and welcome, give a big aloha to our Apostle Bill. Come on. Aloha. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, it was good to laugh in, laugh in the house of the Lord. Amen. You know, God's got a sense of humor. Look at your neighbor. You'll see he's got a sense of humor. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, he's an awesome God. Wow, he's such an awesome God. You know, one of the things we've been talking about in this house for quite a while is shift. And you know, the shift never stops. Shift keeps happening. And, you know, and today, you know, as we're doing praise and worship, you know, God just wants to bring us to another level of, his, of consciousness and awareness of his holy presence. We come in here, we are conscious about so many things, our mind are on so many things, and we've already got our afternoon laid out, and some of us are watching the clock, and you know, because we're so conscious about the environment around us, that sometimes we lose conscious of the present God that's within us, for the hour that it calls upon it, anointed, and called us, amen? You know, in Acts 2, the fire fell, I promise you, and Acts 2 is about to happen again for all of you. Today was just a warm-up to get ready for a conscious and awareness that Acts 2 is going to happen again for you. God said, in the last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit. Remember Acts 2, 17? This is that, sons and daughters. This is that was spoken by the prophet Joel. You need to get a revelation and an understanding that today is your day of an encounter with the Most High God. You say, but what does that look like? We, we have not had an encounter. Let me tell you, when God encounters with you, everything around you is going to get shifted, get changed, rearranged. The fire's about to fall, I promise you. Because in these last days, the fire's going to fall. And when the fire fell in that day, there was an awareness. There was a consciousness. There was a shaking. There was an awakening. See, God's about to awaken you. God's about to break the yokes off of you and all that's been binding you. This is the hour that God's going to empower you. You are the bride, and this is you are the apple of his eye. And that's why Acts 2.17, this is that, sons and daughters. It's got to get inside of you. And same with Luke 9.28. God wants you to have a transfiguration encounter. God wants more time. It's about to visit you. It's like the disciples Peter, James, and John. Here is the most awesome time of their life. They're going to go up to the mountain and pray with Jesus. How them that's awesome? I mean, God wants you to go up the mountain and pray. But isn't that an awesome thing that you're invited to go to the mountain of the Lord and God's invite you to go with him into the presence, into the glory? And, and what were they doing? They were sleeping. They, for some reason, were not conscious. There was not an awareness you see, they had an agenda. See, God's going to reveal our agenda. Amen? See, right away here, they're about to have the most awesome visitation, an awesome encounter where eternity is about to meet time. It's a conversion zone. How many of a collision when two fronts meet? See, we're about to see a Holy Ghost collision on earth as it is in heaven. Because eternity is inside of all of you. Ecclesiastes 3.11 says, I put eternity within you. And God's about to reveal to all of you the realm of glory, that eternal realm that's inside of you. And like the transfiguration, it's going to become real to you. There's going to be manifestations around you. And, and all of a sudden, Jesus is glowing with the glory. See, when that glory came down on Jesus, heaven came down. Oh, and I'll tell you, when heaven comes down, when the glory manifests, how many of there's no physical limitations? How many of there's no boundaries when eternity touched time? Who shows up? Moses and Elijah. To real, reveal to you, there is no distance in a realm of spirit between heaven and earth. And heaven's inside of all of you. 
I put eternity inside of you, and my glory wants to rest on you to reveal the kingdom that's within you, to release everything he has destined for you, to bring an awareness on the conscience of a visitation and a counter that he wants to have with you, but he's got to break everything off of you that has bound you and kept you from the fullness of what God has for you in this hour that he has chosen you purpose and destiny you so God said you're about to have a transfiguration encounter where heaven's about to touch earth there's about to be a conversion zone this is going to become a collision zone where things are about to get rightly changed for you and the way you perceive things the way you understand things the way you evaluate things about to change for you because all mental limitations are coming off of you those mental limitations that have bound you those mental limitations are in you they process the things of God to your life experience that hinder you your life experience will no longer bound you because you're no longer bound by life experience that happened to you because God delivered you put eternity inside of you you have no past you have no presence you're in the now moment with God and the now moment is full with God and full with his presence that's what the transformation is all about this is the now moment and God's meeting you in the now and the now is full with his glory it's full with his presence God wants to get that in you that he has called you for such a time as this he has called all of you for such a time as this your pastor a couple of weeks ago was talking on Haggai man Haggai has just been burning in me and burning in me because there's so much in Haggai here are the people of Israel just come out of bondage God just delivered his people from bondage. He just brought them out. He just brought them out of Egypt. And what happened? See, they could show what they were conscious of. Right away they say, it's not time to build the house of the Lord. Let's dissect it. What does that mean? This is not time to build the house of the Lord. And as you read that whole story, you'll see what happened to them because of the circumstances they've been through, because of the trials and testing they've been through, because all the trauma that they've been through, they've allowed it as an excuse not to do what God called them to do. But those trials and testings and tribulation that you're going through was to build you, to encourage you, to strengthen you, to bring your faith to a new level that he wants to bring you. Those things that you're going through is to perfect you for the call that God called you. Instead of seeing it as the way God saw it, they saw it as an excuse. Well, I've been through this, and I've been through that. I haven't had this, and I haven't had that. So well, you know what they go do? They go build their house while the house of the Lord is in ruins. The very thing that they fear came upon them. What was their fear? Poverty. If I invest in the house of the Lord, if I go and do all these things, what's going to be there for me? So what happens to them? The very thing that they fear came upon them. They worked, they labored, produced nothing. Their fields produced nothing. They had nothing. Why? The very thing they feared came upon them, like Job. The very thing that Job feared came upon them. They had a spirit of fear of poverty. They used an excuse that they had been in trauma. They'd been in trial. They'd been in testing. They'd been in sorrow. They'd been in grieving. And they think because of all of that, that excuses them from the call that God called them, that it excuses them from the purpose that God purposed them. And, and, and all of a sudden, this poverty comes on them. And instead of building the house of the Lord, they build their own temples, their homes. And the very thing that they fear came upon them. Then it goes on and says in Haggai 2, who can remember? See, God always has a way of bringing you back. See, they've gotten way out there. Everything has left them. See, God had to bring them to place. There was nothing. Because they were more conscious about what they'd been through. They were more conscious about the sorrow they'd been through. Not seeing it from a godly perspective. Not seeing that God allowed those things to happen to them to perfect them for the greater that he had for them. The very things that God was doing for them, they reversed it 
and made a worldly thing out of it. I've been in sorrow. I've been in grieving. You don't know what I'm going through, pastors. You have no idea the sorrow I've been in. You don't, and all these excuses. And they give you a dollar tip on Sunday morning. And the next thing you know, pastor, I lost my job. I lost my house. You don't know what I'm going through. The very thing that they feared, pastor, has come upon them. Because they were afraid. See, they didn't say they weren't going to build it. It's not my time. See, I got to take care of me first. I, I got to provide for me first. I got to take care of me. And the very thing that they used as an excuse came upon them. See, guys, I'm taking away your excuses. Then it reminds me of Jeremiah. Jeremiah, I, I'm, Jeremiah, I've called you from your mother's womb. Jeremiah, I sanctified you. Jeremiah, I purposed you. Jeremiah, while you were made in secret, I called you a prophet to the nations. In the next line, pay attention. See, God has a way of revealing to you what you're conscious of. But Lord, I'm but a youth, and I cannot speak. Wait a minute, Jeremiah. Wait a minute, sons and daughters. Did you not hear me? Did I not say to you, I formed you? While you were yet your mother's womb, I knew you. And now that I'm speaking destiny into you, and all you can repeat is what you're conscious of, and that's the things around you, what people spoke to you, what the world imparted to you, the rearing that you've been through, the culture that bound you, the peer pressure on you. I called you. I'm calling you a prophet to the nations. I'm calling my church forward. I'm raising up a bride. I'm setting by fire upon her. And all you can say is, Lord, Lord, I don't qualify. Lord, I, I, I'm not ready. We got all these excuses. And God said, did I not form you? Have I not called you to be a prophet to the nations? You, you're having a Holy Ghost encounter with the Most High. I mean, he's in, he's in your presence. Like he was in the presence of the people in Haggai. He brought them out of bondage. He brought them out of Egypt. He brought them far. But all they could think of is what they came out of, not what they're going into. See, God's calling you out to something greater. But we're still thinking about what we came out of, not what we've gone into. See, God's got to change your, well, your awareness and consciousness of what's really gone on inside of you. Part of the shift is get you aware of the Holy Presence that's in the midst of you and it's already empowered you. See, God's doing something extraordinary right now. See, there should be an excitement in the house of the Lord. There should be a fire burning inside of you because God's about to awaken you. He awoke the disciples so they would miss their day of visitation, the day of transfiguration, the day of transitioning and going into the fullness of what God has for you. He had awakened them because they were sleeping when the glory came down, when the heavens touched earth, when the eternal glory filled the earth. Two dispensations show up. There's no distance in the realm of glory. There is nothing to bind you. There's nothing to hinder you. I put eternity inside of you. I put my glory in you. I put the kingdom within you. I have called you while you're yet your mother's womb. I have purposed you. I have destined you. I have called you. Arise, my bride. Arise out of the ashes of life. Arise out of your sorrow. Arise out of your grief. I'm using it to perfect you for the purpose I called you. All we're aware of is what I've been through. Jeremiah, Jeremiah, I'm speaking to you. Moses, a burning bush encounter. I don't know about you, brothers. If I see you in a burning bush, <laughs> I'm going to hit the deck. You know what I mean? All of a sudden, there's a burning bush in front of you. Then God speaks so clear to you. Oh, Moses, I call you to be deliverer of Israel. How I many has an awesome call? How I many how many of you like to have a burning bush experience? Transfiguration encounter. And Acts 2 visitation. And Acts 2, 17 and Joel 2, 28. I'm pouring out my spirit upon all flesh. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah, guys, I'm pouring it out right now over you. 
But to still act, I'd make a breakthrough. I got to get through to you to break the yoke off of you. I can't act like that in front of my brother and sister. You're so worried about offending your brother and sister, and yet you're offending God. Man, I don't know about you. I got the glory inside of me, and I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'll get radical for Jesus. I'm not going to sit in warm repute because they call it a pew because you died. You made a stink. That's why they call it a pew. Come on, church. Somebody needs to wake up in here. You got a Bernie Bush encounter happening here. God's about to do something extraordinary for you. Those dreams and visions given are about to come alive inside of you. Moses, I've called you. Moses, I've sanctified you. But Lord, I can't speak. Help me, Jesus. It sounds like the church of Jesus Christ. But Lord, I can't do it. Pastor, I just can't do it. I can't speak. Ooh, I'm shy. Give me a break. You got a burning bush encounter going on. You got a revelation flowing in the house of the Lord. Today you could have gone a whole lot higher. But we're so conscious of time. Well, we're conscious about what we got to do. Hey, who gives a rep who speaks? It ain't about who speaks. It's the glory in the room. That's what counts. It's the presence of eternity in the midst of you. It's God awakening and destiny inside of you. God put the fire inside of you to consume the ways of the world in you. Oh, I got to build my houses. But God said, the very thing that you fear is going to come upon you. I don't care what the economy's doing. Jesus still Lord. Moses right away repeated what the world said about him. Isn't it funny how we can tell you immediately what people said about me? Isn't it amazing how all of a sudden I can remember what was spoken over me? All of a sudden I can remember the peer pressure I've been through, but yet there's a visitation right there for you. The eternal realm of glory is in the midst of you. The eternal realm that he put inside of you for the governmental authority of the kingdoms in the midst of you to govern everything outside of you, not to be governed by the world that's trying to bind you. The governmental authority of the world cannot touch you because the greater authority is inside of you. And that greater authority is the kingdom of God imparted to you. Ecclesiastes 3.11, I put eternity inside of you. There's an encounter God wants to have with you that's going to so release you and so launch you into the destiny that he called you and all the excuses in you, all the things that bound you. Well, that's not my culture. Well, that's not the way we do it. That's not how we learned it. That's not how we've been taught. All that junk that's in your trunk has got to come out. You're free from all of that. You are eternal beings. This is a collision zone, and God wants to have a collision with you where eternity touches time, and there's no more limitations on you, nothing more to bind you, nothing more to keep you. I don't want to hear I'm but a youth. I don't want to hear that I can't speak. I don't want to hear that I have not been appointed. God said, you're heirs and join heirs with him. You are as he is, the kingdom of God within you. Your name is like this. Your name is image. You are as he is, and let it out of you. The world's waiting for you. And it's right now. Um, but, Lord, I cannot speak. Well, I think we all have some excuses, don't we? We could all use those excuses. Hallelujah. Oh, um, we all have excuses. I mean, I, I could say up this morning, I don't want to go up there, Lord. You won't even let me use my notes. You're not being fair to me. I mean, I studied all week, and I got it all laid out, man. I got it all pat message. I got it all, isn't that pretty? Guys, you can't even open up your bag. I just carry it to make it look good. I, ca I carry my Bible for religious people to make them happy. <laughs> you know? Hey, I'm no different than you. I'm up here like, okay, God, you open my mouth. I wanna, you want to fill it, it's going to come out. And when it comes out, hey, praise God. Because he knows what every one of you need this morning. Because a lot of you have been using excuses. But if I do this, Lord, if I sow that last five dollars I have, <laughs> you know, Lord, that probably is going to come upon me. Well, the very thing you fear will come upon you because you don't trust him enough to let go of what God given you. It is not yours to keep on to. Amen? You've got to, let, got to learn to let go. We're so fearful. I thought about Sarai. Ha! Huh. Ninety-some years old. Sarah, you're going to birth a child. He said the Bible, she laughed. 
Think about that. 90 some years old, wasn't she? Think at 90 years old and God says, you're going to have a baby? I know some woman here over 40 would go, oh, that ain't happening. And God's laughing in the heavens and say, really? She laughed. Why? Because she was not thinking in a realm of eternity. She was not conscious of a realm of glory that was in her. She was not conscious of eternal realm that has no beginning, that has no end. She was not conscious that God can do all things. Amen? She was thinking in limitations. She was thinking in a natural soulish realm and not a spiritual realm that God was trying to bring her into where things could birth inside of you, where God could release things for you. Even though you're 90 years old, there is no limitations in the realm of glory. There are no boundaries, no physical limitations. There's no time zones that can stop you for the call that God called you. And God wants you to start living in that realm of glory with him. And it's not time to say it's not time to build the house of the Lord. And God said, hey, you re do you remember the temple that's formed of glory? Have you forgotten who I am? Are you forget I am the great I am? Don't you remember the temple and all its glory and how it used to be? See, sons that we don't understand, we haven't had an encounter of the God kind that God wants to have with you that's going to be like the former temple, I promise you, where the glory of God's going to fill that place, where the fire of God's going to fill that place. God said, you remember the temple in its former glory? God said, I got to remind you of Acts 2, what I did then, and what I'm about to do will supersede Acts 2. Oh, son and daughter, what you're about to see. It's going to be so extraordinary for all of you. There'll be no more excuses inside of you. I put eternity in the midst of you. Today's your visitation for revelation. Today is an impartation for the greater that God promised you. Guys, I'm going to bring in awareness of the now, what I'm doing right now in the midst of you. Because now it's full with the presence of God. And where the presence of God is, there's liberty, there's freedom, there's wholeness, there's restoration of all things. See, we, we, we wouldn't understand that the kingdom of God is here. And we could get the revelation that there's a visitation in the midst of you. That all that's binding you, that sickness, that disease, and all those things spoken over you, today are broken. And I guess what? I'm all about laying on hands, but God said, it's already done. So you got to see it's already done. There's some of you today, there's a few of you in here with back pain. Lower back pain, you've been put, not with it, put, not with it. And every Sunday you get prayer for it, and you go right back and get prayer for it. God said, receive what I've already done. It's going to go. That trauma in your back is gone. Some of you need to understand the kingdom of God is here, that transfiguration is happening here, that burning bush experience is happening for you. And like he visited Sarah in her 90s, he birthed something new with something fresh in her womb. When the world around her could not perceive it nor understand it, he impregnated Mary too. And Mary's but a teenager, I promise you. But even in that, God did an extraordinary thing because she learned how to step into the consciousness and awareness of God's presence in the now. See, God wants you to bring in the now. See, we, we keep bowing our knee to the God of yesterday. Your yesterday has no bearing on your now. It has no bearing on it right now because God's here. And he says in Ecclesiastes 3.15, that which has been, has been, and that which is about to be has already been. You say, wow, God, you're talking in riddles. You say, wow, King Solomon, what in the world did God drop in you? Like, yeah. what in the world is that all about? He met the woman at the well. Think about that story. See, what you've got to understand, that which has, has been is now. In other words, God, your past is hidden in Christ. See, God wants you to bring in that present moment with him, your past hidden in him, and in that now moment, in that visitation, in that encounter with that woman at the well he wants to have with you because he brought that which was been to the now into his holy presence. And right into that present moment, he took her past. He took her sorrow and all the prostitution and all that other junk because it was hidden in him, and he brought it into the now moment. And that present time, and that which has been has already been. The cross of Calvary already delivered you. The blood was sufficient for you. I require the past, the Lord would say to you. He says, it's time to bring it into the now. And let me heal what's inside of you. Let me, it's all in me, but I want to bring it before you to heal you, to show you what I'm doing in you, to deliver you, to heal you, restore you, redeem you. For the now is right now. That which has been is right now. This is your now moment. This is where God has our destined for all of you. Today is your transfiguration encounter. Today, Joel 2, 28, it's about to happen for all of you. 
Because God visited Moses, he's about to visit you. Yeah, he visited Jeremiah, the prophets of old. Even Abraham had an encounter. See, Abraham could not be the father of many nations. But until what? He got into that eternal realm. We had that encounter with Melchizedek. When he took covenant Melchizedek, he stepped out of that which was into the now. Into the eternal realm. So he could be the father of many nations. Under the old dispensation. Under the old law and the old things. It will never get you through. It was not eternal realm. I promise you. And God wants you to bring you out of. And into, into that eternal realm with him. Amen. See Abraham had to get there. How many of you is it a, is it a set up time for you? See God's got an assignment for all of you. See God's, God wants to have an encounter with you. For the assignment that he gave you. And nobody can do the assignment that God assigned you. God assigned it to you. There's no plan B for you. But plan A is God to part it for you. So forget about plan B. Because plan B is not a God. I promise you. And some of you are going to have to have a whale to come and get you. Like he did Jonah to get you back on the course that he had for you. Amen. So you ready for your whale visitation? You know what I mean? Because you know God's going to get you where he needs to get you. And God's got an assignment for you. Moses had an assignment. And it was the people of Israel. And how God had to get him there. I, I know it was, a, it was a tough journey. But how no God got him there? It was an assignment. I know Ruth was on an assignment. Did Ruth know her assignment? <laughs> I don't think so. But Ruth, just go back to your people and, and leave Ruth. And she said, no, Naomi. I got an assignment. I don't know what this assignment is, but I know I need to watch over you. I need to be with you. I need to take care of you. Your people will become my people. Going to a land that's not her land or people not her people. I know Ruth was on an assignment. She had excuses. Well, I don't, I don't know these people. I'm a Moabite. They're Israelites. That ain't going to be right. She went back with Naomi who abandoned her people. How would you like to go back with a woman of God who abandoned her people when a fam hit the land, which was judgment. They left there, went to Moab, which is the world, and everything happened. So you, everybody's trying to escape what God's trying to do. Amen? But we got an assignment. Every one of you are an appointed assignment from God. There's an assignment for every one of you. And that's the advance of kingdom of God that's within you. For the purpose that God calls you, Jesus was on an assignment, and the cross could not stop him. The cross empowered him for the greater that he promised each and every one of you. He can have an excuse too. All his friends abandoned him. Everybody left him. They beat him, rejected him, walked away from him. How did Jesus was on assignment? And nothing can stop him. Why? There's no plan B. There's no plan B for any of you. God called you. God destined you. God purposed you. Like he visited Sarah and something birthed, I promise you. When he visited Abraham with Melchizedek and made covenant, he broke the curses off of him. He delivered him and he brought him into that presence, into the now moment with God that's filled with the presence. It was a conversion zone where eternity meant time and things shifted. So God's bringing you into that place, every one of you. You're being shifted today. Like, hey, God, who can remember that temple in his form of glory? And how's it compared to now? It's a question God asks you. How's this, how do we look compared to what used to be? You think, and we got Acts 2. Look at Acts 2. How do we compare to Acts 2? And what yet God wants to do with every one of you. God said, today's your day of encounter with him. God wants you to get into that place he destined for all of you. Think about that visitation. Think about that encounter. Think about the glory and the transfiguration when heaven touched earth. When two dispensations became one. There's no boundaries for any one of you. I put eternity inside every one of you. And the few that had back pains that should be gone by now, the Lord would say to you. And there's a few others in here. You're dealing with some things that are bothering you. Your mind's somewhere else, I promise you. But God's going to call you in the order, in the house of the Lord. 
and bring healing over your mind too. Guys, I'm about to deliver a few that got mind problems today. It's like your mind's all over the place. They even said you're schizophrenic too. And sometimes you even act schizophrenic, I promise you. But most of the church acts schizophrenic, I promise you. Because they don't know what to do. They're in or out. They're all over the place. But God said today I'm bringing order in the house of the Lord. I'm reminding every one of you the call, the purpose, the plan that I have for every one of you. As Acts 2, there's going to be a visitation for every one of you. And like the people of Israel, when Haggai, when God got a hold of them, the last thing God said is there's seed in the storehouse. How much qualified seed in the storehouse? Jesus is that seed. No matter what you go through, no matter what you've been through, no matter what's been taken from you, God said there's qualified seed in the house. There's going to be a harvest, sons and daughters. There's going to be a harvest the world has never seen. That's why Haggai, God was speaking to you and speaking to me. Watch that thing that you fear. God wants to break it off of you. So it don't manifest for you. Job had fear of losing his family, losing everything. And the very thing that Job feared, he lost. Amen? It's time to build my house, the Lord would say to you. What's the excuse today? I'm but a youth. I cannot speak. I'm not educated. That's not my call. It's not my plan. It's not my purpose. That's not the way we do things. That's not how we express ourselves. Let me tell you, when a fire falls on you, when a glory settles down on you, there'll be an expression of the glory come out of you. I promise you. There'll be no quietness inside of you when there's a visitation, when the burning bush experience happens for you. And what about, what about uh, Noah? 120 years. How many like to wait 120 years? How many he knew there was an assignment? See, when you know you're on assignment, whatever that assignment is, you're going to get it through. I know Paul was on assignment. Paul had to get to Macedonia. He had a dream. He had a vision. He saw a man crying out for Paul to come. I know Paul had to go through a beating. How many know that Paul didn't have to get beat? Paul was a Roman citizen. But yet to get to that destination, to get to his assignment, a beaten was not even considered as something to think about. What do you have to go through before God can speak to you? What is the yoke on you that God wants to break off of you? For the day of encounter is upon you. For visitation, revelation, God wants to give you. Today the church is a conversion zone where two fronts are about to meet. Well, the kingdom of God is about to meet time, and I can promise you there'll be no dispensation that can stop what God wants to do because in the eternal realm of glory, there is no dispensation. All becomes one in him, and the hour to be powerful, God has called you to do. Today is your day. It's your day, son. You're here by divine design. And today is a day. The doors of heaven are open to you. No more limitations on you, no matter what the world puts you through. God said, son, hold fast to your confession. I'll get you through. I promise you great mighty things I'm about to do. And the world will never stop you. Because eternity is coming out of you. I put it inside of you. Ecclesiastes 3, 8, 11. That which has been is now, son. And your now is right now with God and healing everything in you. To bring the past to the present to heal and deliver you. For what God's about to use you. And it's right now. It's right now. It's right now, brother. See, God wants to do it right now. It's not tomorrow, not yesterday. But in this now moment, God wants to speak so clear to you. And the way you process, the way you perceive, the way you understand is about to change, my man. That's God's plan. Because all those things inside you are coming off of you that hinder you from receiving and understanding what God wants to say to you. And see, the way God speaks to you is going to be so fresh and so new. It's going to draw you into the glory that he promised he would do. And all the healing of yesterday and tomorrow is already done for you. There'll be no more brokenness in you. No more confusion to stop you. Fear won't hinder you because fear is coming out of you. And a boldness coming in you, the words of life will flow out of you. And that's God's promise to you. Amen? Right now. See, it's going to happen right now. I know we've got to learn when to shift too. Amen? And we got to shift, church. I know we got to shift right now. We need to shift. All of us need to shift and step in. It says time to step in.
Uh, uh, it's like today it's your transfiguration. And uh, uh, you know you got to step in. See, Peter wanted to camp out. See, we want to camp out where we used to be. It won't longer be for you to camp out where you used to be. God's not having it for you. God's going to have a transfiguration encounter for you. A burning bush before you. A Melchizedek about to visit you. A priestly order of God ordained for you. A heavenly power and authority that's in you to change the world around you for the things God empowered you probably will not stop you because the kingdom and the riches of the kingdom are inside of you so who can bind you you got to get it out of you right now you it's your now moment for every one of you and it's filled with the glory amen hallelujah sometimes you had to take the first step amen kyle and i and savannah are on our way to houston here we are today don't ask us how we got here we don't know we don't know nothing anymore and it's awesome god just speaks okay yes lord see that's 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 where you gotta be yes lord we, we sit there and analyze, well, I don't have the money. Well, I really need to be over here. I need, but God said, go. What part of go don't we understand? What part confuse you about go? Today's your transfiguration, visitation, revelation. Eternity has touched time right now in this room. And the eternal glory is inside of you. That which has been is right now. And that which is about to be has already been which is across the Calvary for every one of you. And I require the past, the Lord would say to you. So let's bring it to the throne and to the cross and let Jesus heal every one of you. Let go what used to be inside of you. No more excuses to bind you. I've empowered you. I called you. I dess you. I'll put words the life inside of you. Moses, don't tell me you can't speak. Moses, don't tell me what the world said to you. Don't tell me what the things that bind you that have not visited you, have not put my fire in you. Have I not healed and delivered you? Come on, Jeremiah. While you were yet your mother's womb, did I not call each and every one of you? Before you were formed in secret, have I not known every one of you? Have I not purposed you? Are you not my bride, the apple of my eye? Have I not put my words inside of you? Have I not called you into this dispensation? Have I not released you in this hour to be empowered, to change the nations around you? My presence is in you. My glory will fill you. The revelation will pour out of you. There's nothing to bind you. No fear to stop because fear is not in the kingdom. I promise you. So today you're free. Son, that you are free to be all that God calls you to be. No more excuses for you. No more whiny heinies in church. They're going too. That's it. We're getting rid of the whiny heinies. Because God's got a word for every one of you. And the word of the Lord is for the you inside of you that he created you. Not what the world said about you. Amen. In that prophetic word. See, he had to get Jacob out of the way to bring forth Israel. What's God doing to you today to get out of the way but God's been speaking to the you inside of you for the destiny that God purposed for every one of you. Your prophetic word that was given over you was not for the I but the you inside of you that God called you in this hour he had destined for you for what he purposed you. He said I want to have a conversion zone with you. There's going to be a collision in this time where time will no longer bind you. You will no longer serve time but time's going to serve you and you're going to walk in my glory you're going to walk in my fire. I'm sending my fire upon my sons and daughters. That fire will purify you. That fire will deliver you. It's the fire of my glory. It's the fire of my passion. It's the fire of my purpose in you for what I called you. It's the fire's going to fall on you. And Acts 2 is going to visit you. It's going to break every yoke off of you. Eternity's going to open up inside of you. And His glory's going to come down on you and deliver everybody in this house and deliver you from bondage, fear, anxiety, religion, the doctrine, theology too. It's all through. God said today, I'm visiting every one of you. This is your hour. This is your now time. That which has been right now. God said, let's deal with it. Let's deal with it. It's been hidden in me. I'm going to bring it up to heal you. Let's deal with it. Stop. Keep going over it and over it and calling the pastors day in and day out, coming every Sunday morning for the same thing that you already been healed from and delivered from. Time to move on, church. And it's right now. Right now. It's right now. It's right now, daughter. You can feel the rain. You can feel the rain in the atmosphere. It's a rain of glory coming on you to wash away the world around you. And the brightness of his glory will emanate through you. That's his promise to you. Oh, daughter of Zion, that dream and vision given is for now. That's why I've been healing, delivering, restoring, redeeming time for you to exhilar exhilarate everything I have for you. Oh, daughter, enjoy the now. I'm going to meet with you. This is now faith. 
Amen. It's now faith. Amen. See, all that you've been going through is to have the faith that God requires of you to accept the visitation. Even when you don't understand it, by faith I receive the fire. By faith I receive the visitation. By faith I receive the anointing. By faith I stand. Woo, by faith. That's why you've been through what you've been through. That's why God called you. For such a time as this. Well, I hope it's God inside of you. What good if it God just gave the revelation to me if I don't get it to you? Whatever I got to do to get it through you, I'll do it. Because that ain't about me. It's all about what God wants to do in you and through you for the nation around you. Too, my Hallelujah. I just thought about Gideon. How, how about Gideon? Mighty man of valor. Woo, glory. A man's hiding in a wine press. He's a weenie. He's hiding. But see, God calls things not as though they are. See, he had an encounter, church. God visited him. He visited Gideon. What was the end result? A mighty man indeed. Because why he had an encounter. He became conscious of what God is and is through him. More conscious about God than conscious about the world around him that surrounded him and the enemy trying to bind him. Jacob came into a conscious and awareness of God's glory and God's presence. And all of a sudden that fear of his brother and the fear of the world around him was broken off of him. And a conscious and awareness of the glory and the power and the things that God had for Jacob killed Jacob and brought forth Israel. But it takes faith. I know Abraham had to receive it by faith. So we could go all day long, but you've got to have faith to receive what God just said to you. By faith, you've got to walk it out. Not about a feeling. It's not about an emotion. It's knowing inside of you that this word was for you. And those who had your mind healed and those with your back to, there are others in you that are looking for clarification of the next step and what to do. You've been waiting for doors to open up for you. It seems like everything around you has been closed to you. And God said, I put the squeeze on you for the greater that I promise you to get out of you the authority that I've given you to start prophesying over the doors that start there for you. Start prophesying over your family. Start prophesying over your finances. Start prophesying my word. It's not my word faithful and true. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall remain. I am waiting on you to rise up with the eternal glory that's inside of you, to let it out of you, to start prophesying to the nations around you. Doors are about to open for so many of you. Yokes are being broken in this place today. You have not labored in vain, daughter. And guys, I'm restoring the health of both of you. I'm redeeming your youth and your vitality too because I've put so much inside the both of you. I've put dreams and vision you've been waiting for for so long. There have been prophetic words. You don't even want to have a prophetic word. You're like, Lord, how many more prophetic words? Lord, how much longer must I wait? And he said, right now. He said, because it's to the you inside the both of you that I've been speaking to. And daughter, you shall behold his glory. That's his promise to you. Divine health he has given you. There's a strength coming up in you. God's about to encourage you. The heaven's going to open up before you. Like the transfiguration, he's going to visit you. And the glory's going to come on you. And so encourage you that the voice of the Lord be heard in you like a lion coming out of you. Brother, this is your hour. Your prophetic words that you've been waiting on, those things that have been promised you, those things that have been destined for you, it's like they've been delayed all around you. But God said the delays are through. Eternity's about to open up for you. I'm about to open up the doors of glory before you. My glory is about to rest on you. There's a freedom coming to you. There's a wholeness coming over you. A fire is going to come out of you. You're going to surprise the nations around you because your prophetic word, dreams, and visions are now about to manifest for the both of you. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, my poor niece never did camera before. She's, she don't know where to keep up with me, and I don't either, too. <laughs> oh, I get crazy in the Holy Ghost, but that's okay. I love getting crazy for Jesus. It's awesome. You know, we need to get crazy for Jesus. If you understand Ecclesiastic 3.11, eternity is inside of you, the empowerment of the kingdom, the authority of the kingdom within every one of you, to be empowered, to rule and to reign, all that's outside of you, not to be ruled and reigned by that which is outside of you, but now being ruled and reigned by what's inside of you called the kingdom, the power, the authority of the kingdom within you. Woo! <laughs> Did you get all that? I hope so. 
It only comes once. I'm trying to talk slow. I, I can't talk slow. You know, if I did, I'll fall over my shoes. I get, I, I get excited about Jesus. I, I really do. In case you didn't know, I'm excited. I'm, I'm served in 45 years, and I'm more excited now than I was when I first got saved. It's just awesome. The revelation that this generation is about to walk in through, stay focused on the things above, and I promise you, all the deception of the world that's gone on around you, it's not sin that's going to take you down, I promise you, but there's a deception in the world that's radical that's coming through. They look good, they sound good, but they're not of me, I promise you. He said, take time and pray and ask the Holy Ghost, is this the place you would have me to be? Because there's a lot being released in the earth, but it's not from above. I can promise you the major deception coming to the earth, sons and daughters, you need to live in my glory. I promise every one of you. Live in the now, live in the present, live in the eternal realm that I promise you. And all the deception, all that's coming through will not take you, bind you, or keep you from the fullness that I have for you. Beware, sons and daughters, the deception has gone through the land. And if it were possible, even God's elect would be fooled. Amen? If it were possible. So be aware of what God's calling you. Be aware of the hour for what he called you, the hour he empowered you, for the time he positioned you, for aligned you. Heaven's opened up above you. The fire's on you. This is Acts 2 coming through. All things become anew. It starts today for every one of you. Hallelujah, Pastor.